So having said that, now we're gonna just record the purchase of furniture and equipment. So I'm gonna go back on over here. I'm gonna use the same kind of register concept. I could use either register. I could go into the furniture and fixture register, or I can use the check register. I think most of the time, if cash is affected, people think about the check register as the way to go. If it was going through a bank feed and you were using bank feeds, as we'll do in another course or section, then you could do a similar thing with the bank feeds, which will record in essence and expense form. All right, so I'm gonna hit the drop down. We're gonna add an expense form just like we did with the investment. I'm gonna say this is on 010923. Everything's in 23 here, right? Except for that, okay. And then I'm gonna say it's Office Depot, Office Depot. Now Office Depot is a little bit tricky if you're, if you're purchasing from like an office supply shop because you might purchase a lot of stuff there that is supplies and then you might purchase other stuff that is, is uh, furniture and equipment. And so you might try to mark off like a dollar amount as to when it's furniture and equipment or when it's supplies. And you also might even have, it, sometimes it's easier to actually have a different vendor name, even though you purchase from, from Office Depot for those transactions that are gonna be larger or smaller possibly, because then it'll start to memorize the proper expense account. But let's, but I'm just gonna keep Office Depot here. We'll talk more about that when we get to the bank fees. This is a proper vendor because we're paying them. And then I'm gonna say office supplies. So, so office, I'm, I'm sorry, this is purchase of furniture. Now in the memo, you might wanna be more descriptive about exactly what you purchased. It, the more detail we can get, the better because I'm gonna to want to give this purchase to my tax preparer. And I don't want them to put it on the books for their sub ledger as something generic. Let's say I bought, for example, all this stuff, uh, like this stuff was all bought together. If, if they put it on their sub ledger as like one lump sum of just all, the, all these together and one line item, and they just call it furniture, then it's not gonna cause a problem in the year of purchase but later on, when I, if I ever sell one of these items, like the, the sofa, if I sell the sofa or I dispose of it, then I'm gonna have an issue on, on how I'm gonna record the, the selling or the disposing of it because they grouped it together with all these other things, right? So what we wanna do is we would like to ideally be able to tie out specifically by description and possibly number what it is we actually purchased and then put it on the books in our subledger which would be done by the tax accountant, uh, breaking out each individual item if you purchased it in a group so that when you sell it or dispose of it at some point in the future, you don't run into a mess. So the way you do that is every time you make a purchase and they don't happen that often because this is big purchases that don't happen all the time, you wanna be as specific as possible on the memo of what you purchased and possibly then attach to the purchase, like the actual documentation to provide to your accountant so they can detail exactly what you got. Okay, I'm gonna just say here 18,000. And then this is gonna to go to furniture and equipment. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna type that in and it populates here. Notice that after we do this a couple times, then it'll start to memorize possibly the, the expense account here, furniture and equipment. And that's where we run into this problem of something like an office depot where I might have two expense accounts that are hit by it sometimes. And when we start to get into bank rules in particular, you'll see that uh, we got to be, we can might be able to tailor our bank rules when we get into the, the bank feeds to try to automate it based on the dollar amount as to whether it's going to go to one expense account or another. So let's go ahead and uh, save that. So I'm going to save that. Let's go to our, our balance sheet then and run it again. Run it, Jedi! I'm going to go in and that's from Forrest Gump. I had Forrest Gump in my head with the running thing again. But we're gonna go in here with the furniture. So there it is, it's an expense form that was used. The other side's in furniture and equipment. If I go into it, then of course, it's gonna use an actual uh, expense form. Now notice in this expense form, you can go down to the attachments down here and possibly attach the actual documentation, the PDF of the purchase possibly, so that you can you can get the numbers of what you purchased and everything and get all the detail that you might want to provide to your accountant so they can put it on the sub ledger in the tax software. 
and we'll talk more about the recording of accumulated depreciation and the adjusting entries in that section or course. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's close that out and then scroll back up, back to the report. The other side went to the furniture and equipment, which is right here, boom. And we've got the expense forms.